the expulsion of the Akkadians. The expulsion of the Akkadians, also known as the Great Upheaval, the Great Expulsion, and Le Grand Dérangement, was the forced removal by the British of the Akkadian people from the present-day Canadian maritime provinces of Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Prince, Prince Edward Island, and area also known as Acadie. The expulsion 1755 to 1764 occupied, occurred sorry, during the French and Indian War, the North American theater of the Seven Years' War, and was part of the British military campaign against New France. The British first deported Acadians to the 13 colonies and after 1758 transported additional Acadians to Britain, Britain and France. In all, approximately 11,500 Acadians were deported. After the British conquest of Acadia in 1710, the 1713 Treaty of Utrecht allowed the Acadians to keep their land. Over the next 45 years, however, the Acadians refused to sign an unconditional hold to of allegiance to Britain. I repeat, the Acadians refused to sign an unconditional oath of allegiance to Britain. During the same period, they also participated in various military operations against the British and maintain supply lines to the French fortresses of Ribourg and Fort Beausejour. As a result, the British sought to eliminate any future military threat posed by the Acadians and to permanently cut the supply lines they provided to Louisbourg by removing them from the area. Without making distinctions between the Acadians who had been neutral and those who had resisted the occupation of Acadia, the governor, the British governor Charles Lawrence and Nova Scotia Council ordered them to be expelled. In the first wave of the expulsion, Acadians were deported to other British colonies. During the second wave, they were deported to Britain and France, from where they migrated to Louisiana. Acadians fled initially to francophone colonies such as Canada, the uncolonized northern port of Acadia, Ile Saint-Jean and Isle Royale. During the second wave of the expulsion, these Acadians were either in imprisoned or deported. Throughout the expulsion, Acadians and the Wabanaki Confederacy continued a guerrilla war against the British in response to British aggression, which had been continued since 17, uh, 1744, see King George War and Father Le Loutre War. Along with the British achieving their military goals of defeating Wibu and weakening the Micmac and Acadian militias, the result of the expulsion was the devastation of both a primarily, of both a primarily civilian population and the economy of the region. Thousands of Acadians died in the expulsions, many from diseases and drowning when ships were lost. On July 11, 1764, the British government passed an order in council to permit Acadians to legally return to British territories, provided that they make an unqualified oath of allegiance. The American poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow memorialized the historic event in this poem about the plight of uh, the fictional character Evangeline, which was popular and made the expulsion well known. According to Acadian historian Maurice Basque, the story of Evangeline continues to influence historic accounts of the deportation and facing and facing neutral Acadians and de-emphasizing 
those who resisted the British Empire. Historical context. After the British officially gained control of Acadia in 1713, the Acadians refused to sign an unconditional oath of royalty to become British subjects. Instead, they negotiated a conditional oath that promised neutrality. Some Acadians remained neutral and refused the unconditional oath. The difficulty was partly religious. As the British monarch was the head of the Protestant Church of England and the Acadians were Roman Catholic, they also worried that signing the oath might commit male Acadians to fight against France during wartime and that it would be perceived by their Micmac neighbors as an, as an acknowledgement of the British claim to Acadia putting Acadian villages at risk of attack from Micmac. Other Acadians refused to sign an unconditional oath because they were anti-British. Various historians have observed that some Acadians were labeled neutral when they were not. By the time of the expulsion of the Acadians, there was already a long history of political and military resistance by Acadians and the Wabanaki Confederacy to the British occupation of Acadia. The Micmac and the Acadians were allies through their Catholicism and numerous intermarriages. While the Acadians were the largest population, the Wanabak, Wana, sorry, Wabanaki Confederacy, particularly the Micmac, held the military strength in Acadia after, even after the British conquest. They resisted the British occupation and were joined on numerous occasions by Acadians. These efforts were often supported and led by French priests in the region. The Wabanaki Confederacy and Acadians fought against the British Empire in six wars, including the French and Indian Wars, Father Rails War and Father Lelut Wars over a period of seven, 75 years. The French and Indian War. In 1753, French troops from Canada marched south and seized and, fort and fortified the Ohio Valley. Uh, Britain protested the evasion and claimed Ohio for itself. On May 28, 1754, the war began with the Battle of Jumonville Glen. French officer and signed the Jumonville and a third of his escort were killed by a British patrol led by George Washington. In retaliation, the French and the Indians defeated the British at Fort, at fort Necessity. Washington lost a third of his force and surrendered. Major General Edward Braddock's troops were defeated in the Battle of Monongahela and William Johnson troops stopped the French advance at Lake George. In Acadia, the primarily British objective was to defeat the French fortifications at Beausejour and Ribault and to prevent future attacks from the Wabanaki Confederacy. French and Acadians on the northern New England border, there was a long history of these attacks from Acadia. See the North East Coast Campaigns, 1688, 1703, 1723, 1724, 1745, 1746, and 1747. The British saw the Acadians' allegiance to the French and the Wabanaki Confederacy as a military threat. Father de Lutre War was created in conditions had created the conditions for total war. British civilians had not been spared and as Governor Charles Lawrence in the Nova Scotia Council saw it, Acadian civilians had provided intelligence sanctuary and logistical support while others had fought against the British. During the Lut War, the, to protect the British settlers from attacks along the 
former border of New England Acadia, the Kenbeck River and British Bow built uh, for Halifax, Winslow, for Shirley, Dresden, formerly Frankfurt, and Fort Western Augusta. After the British capture of Beausejour, the plan to capture with war included br uh, cutting trade to the fortress in order to weaken the fortress and in turn weaken the French ability to supply the Micmac in their warfare against the British. According to historian Stephen Patterson, more than any other single factor, including the massive assault that eventually forced the surrender of Louisbourg, the supply problem brought an end to French power in the region. Lawrence realized he could reduce the military threat and weaken fortress with Bourg by deporting the Acadians, thus cutting off supplies to the fort. During the expulsion, French officer Charles Deschamps de Bois-Hébert led the Micmac and the Acadians in a guerrilla war against the British. According to Ribou account books by late 1756, the French had regularly dispensed supply to 700 natives. From 1756 to the fall of Lisboa in 1758, the French made regular payments to Chief Jean-Baptiste Cope and other natives for British scalps. My goal was just to have the historical context of the Acadian deportation. Um, I will just list the British deportation campaigns. You had the Bay of Fundy, 1755. I will provide the link. It is, uh, in fact, it is a Wikipedia link. The uh, Bay of Fundy, 1755. You have Cape Sable, Ile Saint Jean, and Ile Royale, Petit Kodiak River Campaign, Saint John River Campaign, Gulf of Saint Lawrence Campaign. This interests me, so I will read it. Main article: Gulf of Saint Lawrence Campaign, 1758. In the Gulf of St. Lawrence campaign, also known as the Gaspé expedition, British forces raided French villages along present-day New Brunswick and the Gaspé Peninsula coast of the Gulf of St. Lawrence, ou Fleuve St. Laurent. Sir Charles Hardy and Brigadier General James Wolfe commanded the naval and military forces, respectively, after the siege siege of Louisbourg, 1758, Wolfe and R.D. led a force of 1,500 troops in nine vessels to Gaspé Bay, arriving there on September 5th. From there, they dispatched troops to Miramichi Bay on September 12th, Grande Rivière, Quebec, and Pabos on September 13th, and Mont Louis, Quebec, on September 14. Over the following weeks, Hardy took four sloops or schooners, destroyed about 200 fishing vessels, and took about 200 prisoners. Then you have Restigouche, you have Halifax, you have Maine. The deportation destinations you have, I'm just listing them, Maryland, Massachusetts, Maine, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania and Virginia, Carolinas, and Georgia. We're talking about, of course, North Carolina and South Carolina and Georgia, France and Britain, and the fate of Acadians that I won't have the time to read and also you have the historical comparisons listed the commemorations also as well as of course the references I will post 
I will put the link in the video description. Thanks for listening.